The countdown timer is on. Finally, Boeing is ready to reattempt the Starliner launch after the humiliation in the race with SpaceX. This flight will open a gateway to paradise for Boeing if successful, but it could be the gates of hell if it fails. And the question here is whether Boeing Starliner is actually safe. Should NASA continue to use Starliner for future missions? Why not focus on Dragon? Let's find out more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. First, we want to mention the current situation of the Starliner capsule. After years of delays and a dizzying array of setbacks during test flights, Boeing Starliner spacecraft is finally set to make its inaugural crewed launch. As soon as May 6, the Boeing crewed flight test is planned to lift off from SLC-41 on an Atlas V rocket with NASA's two astronauts, Barry Wilmore and Sunita Williams. Last week, final preparations began with Boeing fueling Starliner with the propellant it needs for its altitude control thrusters and abort system. Similar to SpaceX's Dragon, Starliner uses hypergolic fuel for its systems. This fuel can be stored at room temperature so it can last the entire mission. However, it's extremely toxic for humans. Fueling was completed mid last week, and so teams from both Boeing and ULA picked up Starliner and moved it to SLC 41 overnight. The process began at Boeing's facility at Kennedy Space Center, originally constructed as one of the hangars for the space shuttles, and concluded just outside SLC 41 at the Vertical Integration Facility. Their Starliner was lifted and attached atop this special Centaur upper stage. Unlike other Atlas V rockets, Starliner rocket's second stage will be powered by two RL-10 engines. While Vulcan Centaur typically comes with two engines as standard, Atlas V Centaurs usually fly with just the one. The unique trajectory required for human spaceflight and the need for redundancy necessitate two engines on Starliner Atlas Vs. If you're familiar with Atlas V, you'll know that each rocket has a designation that indicates its configuration. For the Starliner mission, Atlas V's configuration is N22. N stands for no fairing, 2 denotes the number of solid rocket motors, and the other 2 represents the number of engines in the second stage. Looking at what Boeing and NASA have done for Starliner recently, things seem to be going quite smoothly. Together, they've managed to overcome most challenges associated with this seemingly cursed spacecraft. NASA officials also made it clear that they're collaborating more closely with Boeing than ever before, with ground personnel at Boeing's facilities overseeing some of the fixes the company's implemented ahead of the upcoming Starliner flight. Steve Stitch of NASA, who's responsible for overseeing all aspects of the Starliner program, shared confidence in the probability analysis of crew loss during the flight, with the results falling below NASA's safety thresholds. He explained that for Starliner, NASA's acceptable probability for loss of crew is 1 in 270, and for loss of mission, it's 1 in 55. Boeing's exceeded both these benchmarks, and the probability of crew loss for Starliner is 1 in 295, and for loss of mission, 1 in 57. He does not have equivalent data for SpaceX's Crew Dragon. However, after all, can we actually trust the safety of this spacecraft? According to their planned launch schedule, Starliner is set to launch in about two weeks, but in reality, Boeing and NASA have a long list of issues to address. During the last flight test in 2022, for example, engineers found that the suspension line on the Starliner's parachute had a lower threshold for failure than initially expected. NASA and Boeing's engineers tested a fix for that issue earlier this year, but parachutes will remain top of mind as they work through some last-minute checkouts before liftoff, Stitch said Thursday. Some tape was also used to protect wiring harnesses that was found to be flammable, and Boeing had to remove and replace about a mile's worth of material, according to Mark Nappy, vice president, and Starliner's program manager over at Boeing. Boeing may even need to implement a redesign of some of the spacecraft's valves because of corrosion issues. That upgrade, however, is not expected to be in place until the second crewed flight, slated for 2025 at the earliest. On May's inaugural crewed flight, Boeing will instead use a perfectly acceptable mitigation that should prevent the valves from sticking, Nappy said in March. It's unclear whether this matter will be handled satisfactorily or not, but my trust in Boeing's reliability is not much. The series of missteps with Starliner has led Boeing and NASA to struggle for years to figure out what went wrong. Boeing's commercial airplane division has also faced a string of scandals, including the 737 MAX crisis and recent quality control issues highlighted after a door plug exploded on an Alaska Airlines flight back in January, damaging the company's reputation big time. Compared to these concerns, SpaceX's Dragon is performing incredibly well. They are the only partner of NASA that's been operating crew mission independently for nearly four years. NASA must feel lucky about this because it was Dragon that pulled him out from the pit of the Starliner program with Boeing. From the outset, NASA aimed for both companies to operate concurrently. Each Crew Dragon and Starliner spacecraft would serve as a backup for the other. 
providing astronauts with options to continue flights even if technical issues or other obstacles force one spacecraft to land. However, in the early days of awarding contracts to SpaceX and Boeing back in 2014, NASA favored Boeing, a long-standing partner since mid-20th century, over SpaceX, who then was a relatively young and erratic company in the eyes of the federal agency. Steve Stitt said this at a July 2020 news conference, When one provider, SpaceX, has a newer approach than the other, it's often natural for a human to spend more time on that newer approach, and maybe we didn't quite take the time we needed with Boeing's more traditional approach. Now what? It's NASA's shame, and that erratic no longer lies with Dragon, but is actually shifted to Starliner. If for comparison, it must be said that even Dragon's technology also really humiliates Starliner. Frankly, Boeing's making technology that looks just like it did several decades ago. The crew Dragon 2 has a better heat shield that could enable it to be used for faster re-entry back to Earth, thus enabling it to function beyond the LEO that the ISS is in. Importantly, even if Boeing does succeed fully, which we hope they do, they'll only be able to do two launches a year. It's a one-use throwaway rocket built from legacy parts of the space shuttle. SpaceX redesigned their rockets and Crew Dragon capsule from the ground up by reverse engineering old engine systems, etc., and radically improving each area with 21st century interfaces, materials, and know-how. Inside the Starliner's cockpit, the interface couldn't look more different when compared to the sleek touchscreen used to operate SpaceX's Crew Dragon. Control panels, gauges, screens, and numeric keypads dominate the astronauts' field of view. It's a design reminiscent of NASA's space shuttle cockpit. During SpaceX's historic launch on May 30th, NASA astronauts Bob Buchan and Doug Hurley seemed to only minimally interact with a row of three adjacent touchscreens. In reality, Crew Dragon does most of the flying. The two pilots only manually intervene twice during the whole test flight. It's probably a dream of every test pilot school student to have the opportunity to fly on a brand new spaceship, and I'm lucky to get that opportunity with my good friend, said Beckon in a NASA broadcast several weeks before the launch. Of course, you know, growing up as a pilot my whole career, having a certain way to control the vehicle, this is certainly different, Hurley added. Besides, SpaceX's commercial crew flights represent savings of $100 million compared to Boeing. Don't be startled by this, since the Starliner has not flown yet, it is necessary to consider both ticket prices and inflation. SpaceX's per-ticket cost to offer significant savings relative to the price of flying astronauts on Boeing's Starliner. That's assuming, of course, that Starliner is actually certified safe to carry astronauts. The latest per-seat ticket price offered by SpaceX is actually $75 million. According to a 2019 report by NASA's Office of Inspector General, Boeing flights were expected to cost $90 million a ticket, which was already way more than Roscosmos was charging. Adjusted for inflation, Boeing's price works out to be $100 million a ticket in today's dollars, also more than the implied price of Roscosmos ticket. So compared to what Boeing will charge, SpaceX astronaut ticket prices represent taxpayer savings closer to $100 million of spaceflight. This is a huge number from the taxpayers that the American people have to pay each month. After all, the progress shown by SpaceX makes Boeing look like a snail in the rabbit's race. Boeing will never be able to catch up with SpaceX, even if it does succeed in the upcoming launch. Boeing likely has already done a lot of tests, but perhaps they should have been more ambitious, or they should have tried to outdo NASA's requirements. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.